Well, it's the middle of October, the 16th to be exact, and I'm down on the allotment. I'm just doing a bit of planting, but I thought since it's a really lovely day, I'll just do a quick tour around. I'm pretty pleased with everything. Almost everything is replanted now for uh, winter and spring, and it's all growing pretty well. Solved most of the problems. Had a little bit of problem with cutworm. That's mostly resolved now. I watered in with the fruit and veg protection nematode, which is the best thing that I know about. To solve that problem, once you've planted, if you could solve it before you planted, of course, but you know, I didn't. So uh, I had to cough up, I don't know how much it was, seven pounds or something like that, but it's easily worth it for me to safeguard my winter and spring crops. Um, other than that, yeah, it's all pretty good. It's always just a little bit tricky when you're growing all year round to make sure that you kind of try and smooth out the um, amount of food that you grow. We try and grow about 200, 250 pounds worth of food a week. That's about enough for Debbie and I and all of our local family. And we try and do that week in, week out for the whole of the 52 weeks of the year. And so that's when, so you never see like huge amounts of anything on our plots we're just trying to keep everything ticking over at a nice easy rate let's have a look around so here's a quick overview of the plot and as you can see i use a lot of covers people ask you know why so much cover well effectively i'm tripling the size of the polytunnel at a lot lot less in terms of cost and the added benefit is all these covers just pop off especially the cold frame ones even the low tunnels that I don't need just go on this little storage path here. Uh, and so in summer, these are just like ordinary raised beds, just with a little bit of extra shelter from the wind. But in winter, they're just like extra polytunnels. And so why bother with them at all over winter? Well, for me, it's all about leaf quality and growth rate. Under cover, the leaves are much t more tender uh, much nicer quality, less mould on them, less insect damage, all sorts of stuff, less bird damage. And growth rate, well for every 10 degrees centigrade increase in temperature, veg grows about twice as fast. So I think that in winter I get about three times the growth rate that I would get outside. Um, and that is incredibly valuable over winter. Okay, so these are my first early strawberries. These are all in hanging baskets. And you can see the hanging basket there. They will go in the polytunnel after these have had a few good frosts on them. So that'll be sometime in February probably. They'll grow on in the polytunnel up in the canopy. They really like it there. These are my ochre. We really like these in December and January when we don't have any radish and then we get radish again in about March so we have about a month without radishes but these are a really nice tangy crunchy kind of lemony taste I actually like them more than I like radishes but yeah just grow them on that little storage path in those containers parsnips here a few very small difficult to see uh, spring cabbages and then we've got potatoes here and these are Christmas potatoes these were sown in July the frost got them but they're they're reasonable size they're good enough for salad potatoes which of course is what they're being used for we'll harvest these until April when we uh, harvest our first early potatoes in the polytunnel then in here I've got my second early strawberries so we will pop the cold frame top on these in February. And as I say, they'll be a little bit later than the ones in the polytunnel. And then of course we'll switch to our main crop ones in June, July. So this is the main midwinter kale bed. Well, I've got some for early winter uh, in, uh, back at home. But this is uh, really nice, lovely quality. And because it's under the slow tunnel, again, the leaves are beautiful and super tender by comparison with the outdoor stuff. Interplanted this obviously with 
turnips and radishes. All the radishes are out now, but the turnips are coming on beautifully. We love these turnips. These are Tokyo Cross. So this is one of my lettuce beds. One of my favorite varieties for winter. This is Roxy. It's no good for any other time of year. Uh, winter, well, late autumn, winter and early spring. It goes a really deep red, much redder than this, the colder it gets. And of course it's interplanted here with loads of spring onions. I generally do this as a standard planting for me, spring onions and lettuce. I did lose a few of these to um, cutworm, but I've replanted the gaps. That's why there's a few that are smaller than the others. So it looks like these are all okay now. So this is a bed in desperate need of tidy up. These cows are pretty much finished now. So they're going to be replanted with spring cabbage. These are spring cabbage, got a little bit eaten, but uh, they'll be fine. And I interplanted that with lettuce. That lettuce will be out of here in about two weeks time. And then here we've got early purple. This is my earliest winter purple sprouting broccoli. We've just taken a few off here. Um, harvested a few days ago so it's just starting to come into flower but hopefully it will flower all the way through until early um, spring and we've got our late purple sprouting broccoli that will kick in we've got another few quite badly eaten spring cabbages but again they'll be just fine and in the little greenhouse we've got our winter squashes and this did have onions in it, which is why there's the odd onion that we found on the floor. Some more here, down there, and some more there. And we've eaten a few of these as well. Quite a nice harvest of winter squash this year, quite pleased with it. So this bed will soon all be harvested. It was potatoes. I had two crops of potatoes off there in succession, which I know is not the done thing but it works out perfectly well. Um, and then I put some lettuces in, some turnips, some radish, and they'll soon be out. And I will put carrots in here. I've got carrots in this one. None of them are germinated yet, I only planted them last week, so it's no surprise. And this is what you want with carrots. You want them to germinate and not grow very much in uh, this year and to start growing again in sort of mid-February time. Otherwise you stand a much bigger chance of them going to seed. So late planting is pretty good, provided you can actually get them to germinate. So this is one of our charred beds. Lots of weeds in it, unfortunately. Um, chard will survive in this climate outside, but it won't grow actively. Whereas uh, in this cold frame, it grows away at quite a nice rate keeps up with our harvesting every week we get uh, four or five litres of chard from this bed and then some Grenoble red lettuce looking quite nice this is the last of my pepper beds we've harvested so many peppers off here it's been incredibly successful growing in these little low tunnels I've had three three of these beds and this is just the last one of them. And I'm going to harvest that today and plant the kale. So this is the first of my spinach beds that will overwinter. I should get a nice crop off it on the run up to winter. Uh, and then obviously in the spring. And this is all giant winter. Plant sowed six weeks ago. So it's coming on really nice. Hopefully we'll be harvesting that uh, a week on Sunday. It's Friday today. This is one of our two asparagus beds. I'll be cutting this down soon. You could leave it longer until it dies back naturally, but it's currently shading this uh, bed of chard. So uh, I want it out. And so that chard can grow on. This chard bed has not been incredibly successful. Quite a lot of it has gone to seed. 
but there's enough plants in there to make it worthwhile, I think. So this is the most mature of my winter salad beds. And this one is fleshy trout, which is very similar to freckles. And you, hopefully you could see that that was interplanted with spring onions. And then here we've got canasta and then smile, green oak leaf, canasta. And I can't pronounce the name of this one, but it was free with Grow Your Own magazine. It's meant to be a really good winter lettuce. It's looking quite nice so far. Then some more canasta and again, all interplanted with spring onions. And then this is my oriental greens. So there's some tatsoi, some red pachoi, and some salad rocket in here. And then in here we've got turnips and herbistella and some more turnips and this bed this is one of the beds that will be replanted in probably February time with uh, lettuces for early spring so those lettuces will be started um, basically the beginning of January under lights it's a bit too early to start lettuces unless you've got grow lights but I really like getting them started really nice and early. They don't grow very much, they just put the roots down and then they rock it into life in early spring. And that means that we've then got uh, plenty of space in the polytunnel where a lot of our lettuce beds are to, um, to replant with flowering brassicas, cauliflowers and Romanesco cauliflowers and calabrese and the like. So this is one of our many carrot beds and this one we'll leave the carrots in the ground here until January time when we'll start harvesting this bed and hopefully this will last us through until about April and a new little spinach bed that we planted just a couple of days ago we probably won't get much of a harvest off this one until spring but uh, we're all about successions here and then this one is also going to be replanted to uh, spinach and we definitely won't get a harvest off this one until spring. Another nice little salad bed and a spinach bed. This was sown in August and when we sow in August here it almost always goes to seed. And we don't mind that because obviously we're going to harvest this, clear this bed and this will be replanted with lettuces and they will be the ones that we'll harvest whole. So we take the, we won't harvest one leaf at a time, we'll take the whole lettuce and that will be in January and early February, just when lettuce growth is kind of stalled. So we'll just let these grow on into nice big lettuces and pick those. We've got a nice little perennial kale. This is planted really as an annual. So this will be out of here in um, May time and uh, we'll probably plant something like New Zealand spinach or something or um, golden purslane in here but this plant will be really uh, pay for its space in spring when we'll just get a massive profusion of these beautiful little leaves about this sort of size brilliant sorry little New Zealand spinach bed New Zealand spinach is really finishing now. We'll probably get one more harvest off that and then clear that again. And then next year this will be New Zealand spinach again because it just self seeds like crazy. So this is uh, ever bearing strawberries. They need chopping back now. In fact, they could have probably been done with chopping back a month ago. I just didn't get around to it. And I've got a few nice little trees, apples and cherries in there. This was, and to some extent still is, the summer flowering brassica bed. So these were calabrese down the front and purple sprouting broccoli down the back. We are still getting quite a lot of side shoots off the uh, calabrese. So I'm kind of reluctant to take them out 
until loads are finished. And this is Sante, which is a summer purple spat in broccoli. And this is almost finished again. So I'm pretty sure this bed will all be harvested uh, by the end of this month. And that'll be replanted with field beans in November. So this bed is just August planted spinach. It's almost all going to seed now, but uh, well, there's still at least two weeks of harvest left in that. And by that time, the spinach that I showed you earlier will be ready. And yeah, there's turnips and radishes and spring onions and all the bits and pieces in there, but I can't be able to take the top off. So this bed is purple sprouting broccoli for May, April, May. And it's looking pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. That is variety cl claret. And then these here are, I think these are all cauliflowers of various different descriptions. And maybe there's some uh, early purple, purple sprouting broccoli. That will be for February and March. There's a few gooseberries down here. They need pruning. And this is my new bed that I've just put in. This is going to be a squash bed. I did a video about how I prepared this bed. But right now this is all field beans and onions and garlic. So it's all field beans, but it's interplanted with onions and garlic. Um, so here's an example of some tough ball onions. And in here, there are um, Shenshu yellow onions from sets, again interplanted with field beans. Now there are some people, but I mean I think it's scientifically proven that onions interfere with field beans a little bit in that they won't fix as much nitrogen. Uh, the onions secrete something from the roots that interferes with the bacteria that grow on the roots of the field beans. But I don't really care about that. I want a, a harvest more than I want um, nitrogen fixing. It's really easy for me to add a bit of nitrogen into the soil if, um, if needs be. But uh, anyway, we'll see how that goes. If you can afford to take the risk, you can try it. If not, listen to the books. I don't really listen to the books very much. I like to prove things myself. Um, and here we've got some tough ball onions, looking nice. And then these are the carrots that we'll be harvesting up until the end of this year. Interplanted into my little flower border. I've got some trees like cherry trees and apple trees and pear trees and plum trees. But I've also got these perennial kale plants. They need quite substantial stakes and I use these old bungee cords to hold them up and there's another one down there kind of giant but these will be replaced this spring I've had quite a lot of rain so almost all of my water butts are full and I'm starting to pump water into my IBC tanks so let's take a look at the polytunnel so these are my oldest French beans. These have almost finished now. Still getting a few off them though, so I've left it in. I'll probably leave this plant in for another week. Got a few chili peppers down there. The odd tomato plant in containers. Left one tomato plant in the ground there because it's got a lot on it. This is my little grow shelf. Got a lot of spares basically on here. Just got a few more spinach here, a few more turnips to go out. Those are the kales that I'm planting into the pepper bed. These are the spring onions that I'm planted into the lettuce bed in the polytunnel. They're not quite big enough yet, just give them another week. A few more very scrappy tomato plants, just enough to keep us going at the moment. There's another one here. And then these are carrots and I've got three of these containers. And these are the ones we'll be eating up until, uh, well, in, in sort of March, April time. And then in May, we'll have our first early carrots ready. 
So hopefully we'll get a complete succession of carrots all year round. A few more spares. This is my second oldest French beans. Quite a few on these. Not obviously as huge a crop as you'd get in summer, but it's still worthwhile. Keeps us in beans. Doesn't look particularly healthy now, of course, at this time of year. We're getting a few frosts, but uh, it's not too bad. The rest of the polytunnel is all about loads of different successions coming over the next few months. So in here we've got our early garlic. And then we've got lettuces interplanted with spring onions. And these will be the ones that we'll be harvesting all the way through winter, especially when the weather's not very nice. And then down there we've got our earliest overwintered onions. These are tough ball, looking quite nice. So then we've also got a big spinach bed here and another big lettuce bed here. This will be all interplanted with these spring onions in about a week's time. And the idea being here that basically what we'll do is come mid-February, we don't need all this lettuce. So what we'll do is we'll start taking alternate lettuces out and putting cauliflowers, calabrese, um, early sprouts, Brussels sprouts and Romanesco cauliflowers in here. And then gradually, as those brassicas grow bigger and bigger, we'll just harvest more and more of the lettuces until this is clear of lettuces. And then same sort of story down here. We'll have loads of spinach outside in the coal frames and the low tunnels by mid-February. So in here we'll start clearing this spinach and we'll start replanting it with turnips and carrots and you know various other veggies for harvest in May. And then all of this will get cleared middle to end of May. And then in will go the tomatoes. Tomatoes in here, same sort of story. And then we're toying with the idea of putting melons in at the ends and growing those up into the canopy. So we'll see how that goes. And then we'll also have our early French beans, our early runner beans, our early courgettes, our early peas, you know, all of those sorts of things in here as well. All of our early potatoes. Some people do say, well, what do you do with all this lettuce? There's way too much there. Well, actually, not really. Debbie and I eat about 10, maybe 11 lettuce, uh, salad, big salads a week between the two of us. Each one is about two litres. So let's just say for the sake of argument, that's 20 litres of salad. And then the local family eats about another 10 litres. So that's 30 litres of salad. And that, that is a lot of lettuce in midwinter when it's not growing very fast. So we do need quite a lot. And it's the same story with the spinach and the chard, etc., etc. We eat a lot. We're not vegetarian. Um, Debbie's pescatarian and I just eat a whole food diet. But anyway, when you don't buy anything, you get through a lot of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Lotman channel and I'll see you soon.